You're listening to Ecto Portal, a journey into the unknown with Anthony Anderson and Verna Wilson. I hope that you are seated comfortably with the light turned down and the curtains drawn. The journey into Ecto Portal, the journey into the unknown, the unexplained, the phenomena, the phenomenal, the mysterious. I'm Anthony Anderson, your host, and I'm here with my co-host Verna Wilson and Linda Walker. And tonight's show, we're going to discuss the tools of the trade for ghost hunters. We're going to discuss ghost hunting equipment. Yay! How to hear the voices from beyond. That's yes. right. Or the spirit photograph from beyond, or yeah. the energy from beyond, the energy from beyond or, or yeah. the apparitions from beyond. Yeah. Or the, yeah. So minute. that's going to be tonight's topic. We're going to discuss it in studio. Tommy Netspan's here. He's stepped away to make an important phone call to DC. I don't know what that was about. And then uh, <laughs> we're going to have some callers call in as well. And we're also going to talk about the equipment, what they use what mm-hmm. they like to use, and maybe share some new equipment that we're not aware of. What they recommend for beginning and advanced, um, if you're just starting into this field, or if you're already in it. Exactly. I mean, you, we can talk about basics, the basic things to probably start out with, and then maybe other equipment you can work your way up to. And then maybe if you yeah. have enough money and a, and a bottomless credit card, you can get, <laughs> you know, the $1,000, uh, $10,000 equipment. Oh, yeah. Which I would love to get, but someday. Someday. You know, someday. Someday. When another ghost hunter dies and leaves me, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I'm going to get it. That yep. would be great. I know, right? So, yeah, tonight's topic is ghost hunting equipment, and we're here in live in studio with Tommy Nett's band. And Hi. Judy. Hey, welcome hey, back. Tommy. And Judy. And Judy, and little Judy, and her little the wonder dad. dog. She's really cute. Woof, woof. She's <laughs> and Tommy's hi. sister. Hi. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Verna. <laughs> All the way from Chicago. Yeah. Illinois. So we're gonna talk about we are going to talk about equipment. Things that are going on mm-hmm. in ghost hunting. You Oops, know. I didn't have your mic down. Let's just repeat all that. It's Tommy Netspan live in the studio with Judy. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Wow. <laughs> and Judy, the Wonder Dog. That's right. And Judy, the Wonder Dog. And we're having a show tonight riff, about riff, ghost riff. hunting equipment. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. And dogs can be ghost hunting equipment. Absolutely can be ghost hunting well, equipment. They, well, been, dogs are very um, intuitive. Actually, this uh, article on Facebook that I saw, they were talking about that does animals like dogs and cats really see spirits? And mm-hmm. they say they're very intuitive. They do see them on a regular basis more than humans do. Like kids. A lot of yeah. children see uh, spirits oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So... You never know what's going to be your good tool. Even yourself is a good ghost hunting tool. Absolutely. Trust your instincts. Yeah, I think that's the best tool, personally. Oh, yeah. It's the one you're going to always have, the one that's never going to run out of batteries, (laughs) never going to lose it. (laughs) Yeah. It's you. Right. Right. And and and, uh, when with dogs or or, or cats around in in, in a uh, room, they could sense something before you. Most people can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even fish. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, the fish. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> hey. They do. We don't you hear never it. Know. You're a lizard. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. Hey, Birds bloop. can, because I've seen, actually, um, parrots and cockatiels act up when there's activity going on. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Well, I mean, you know that dogs have, or excuse me, animals in general have that sixth sense 
and I think that was proven during the great tsunami, you know, and uh, how in like Thailand, for instance, all the animals ran up, you know, they oh, knew yeah. the tsunami was coming. You know, they just sort of have this sixth sense that you can certainly use in ghost hunting. Now, Judy has not been on any ghost hunting yet. Okay. No. She's still in training. All right. <laughs> she looks very sensitive. She is. I don't want to throw, uh, you know, an uh, EMF reader on her back and just throw her around <laughs> the house. You That's know. about all she could carry. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty tiny. She's I know. Little. I know. There's some ghost hunters that do have, you know, to train their dogs yeah, to absolutely. to ghost hunt and everything. Oh, look at her. She's yeah. so cute. Yeah, she, she's. Uh, She's yeah. been young, young. She's a hey, amazing dog. Yeah. If you strapped a voice recorder to her, can you imagine the EVP she get? Oh, look at the little dog. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I would cool. hope so. Certainly, yeah. And uh, I believe we're going to mm-hmm. hopefully have some calling guests tonight. I'm going to read the number on air. We'll take that. Just for those that maybe uh, forgot about it, and those that want, wanted to give us a call tonight to talk about paranormal equipment, uh, the number here in the station to call in live is six two eight. Four four four, thirty two zero two. Again, six two eight, four four four, thirty two zero two. So, if you want to call in and talk about ghost hunting equipment, your favorites, the ones you hate the most, maybe Any experience you've had, maybe ghost hunting apps that you've used. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to answer any questions. You know. Or even your own intuition um, without the equipment. We'd love to hear that too. Why not? Why yeah, not? Sure. why not? Yeah. So let's go over the basics. Like, what would you consider, if you were a novice ghost hunter, what would be the best thing to start out with equipment-wise? Well, I think an EMF reader. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, you can actually double, like, your equipment by getting the K2 meter, which is cheap. It's, like, $40. Mm-hmm. And in using the K2, you can use it as an EMF reader, and you can also uh, use it as a spiritual communication device. You know, most of mm-hmm. those uh, ghost shows have... K2 meters, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't think us as ghost hunters, and you may agree too, Tony, that uh, we really know why they like this cheaper little version, this particular kind, you know, mm-hmm. to do this sort of um, what I consider psychokinesis, mm-hmm. okay? But uh, what's nice is you can also disprove ghosts with that same EMF reader, right. you know, because often yeah. you have uh, something called a fear cage and when you are being bombarded with emf fields and it actually changes your brain waves absolutely okay it actually makes you feel paranoid the hair on the back of your neck stands mm-hmm. up you know i'm sure if um any of the listeners out there have maybe been in their office late at night and they're on the computer they're on their telephone and maybe the fax is going and all of a sudden they get this creepy feeling like mm-hmm. somebody's in my office you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's probably because they're being bombarded with the mf fields that they're feeling that way that was just sense. like yeah. um when i used to work for macy's we had the stock room and a lot of my co-workers didn't like to go in there and i went in there and i realized why they were freaking out so much because there was so much electricity and all kinds of wires and all kinds of things going on in there that gives you that creepy feeling you know yeah, yeah it's and some people are very sensitive to that what if it was a yes. server room too yeah yeah, and I remember doing a case at a restaurant, and there was a particular room that they felt that, and it was a computer room with servers, mm-hmm. and then they would get vertigo, but the room was slanted. So, of course, oh, yeah. weird. Yeah. You know. So, I think that one thing that people really, you know, should go into ghost hunting with is a very open, skeptical mind. Because mm-hmm. if you go in thinking everything is a ghost, then everything becomes a ghost. And, you know, if you disprove a ghost, you're helping people sleep at night. You're not doing anything as exciting as finding a ghost but think of the good that you're doing for people that you're allowing them to say oh i need an electrician not a ghost hunter you know so <laughs> right it's true and i know lots of electricians and plumbers people lots of them i get 10 percent, 10 percent for everyone <laughs> but yeah i think that an emf reader is fine because you really want to go in there with that open skepticism you know because mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. you know it, it's hard enough for skeptics to believe in what they call this as a pseudoscience. So we need to sort of take another perspective of it and um, maybe just sort of think what stands up to the skeptics, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, my things, oh, we have a caller, great. Think we have a caller. I think those are our guests or a caller.
Are you there? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Hello, welcome to the show. Ann Lee Hi, Hall. Tony. Hi, Ann. How are you? Oh, it's Ann. Well. Hello, Ann. Hi. Hi, Ann. Hi, Vera. Uh, I'm Hello. sorry. I'm sitting inside my car oh. using my Bluetooth. Oh, good. Okay. Oh. Perfect. Wow. Calling you because where I'm living right now is Comcast country and uh, my AT and T carrier is not working well here. No, that oh. could never happen with AT and T. Not that. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of drop calls. What I call it. I, I call it AT and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Tony. But you know what? Huh. I have too many years invested in AT and T. I can't go. give up on them. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. I get okay. it. So, ghost hunting equipment. You must have your own favorite equipment that you use as a professional ghost hunter. Besides the ubiquitous uh, voice recorder and camcorder mm -hmm. and camera. Yeah. What's your What's your What's your favorite other than the basics? What is the one that you like to use the most? I love the Ovilus. Oh, the Ovilus. Oh, the okay. Ovilus is a nice... Well, I've seen Ovilus. you use that. Yeah, my sister had an experience with the Ovilus once. You know. I love the first generation Ovilus. They're on like, mm. what, four or five now? Yes, there are. And I have a few of them, but I always revert back to the first generation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just Even given as 500 um, word a dictionary. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What you can find when you use it is it all of a sudden says something that is outside of its range. Oh. You know that there's something paranormal. So it's not part of the 500 word dictionary then. Right. Interesting. Ooh, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Tommy, is, Tommy, is that Tommy? Yes. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Hi, Tommy. Hi. You know, I have the Ovilus 3, as you know. Uh -huh. And um, I remember, I remember, was it the PX or was it the Ovilus when we had that one particular case and it said my name? I mean, it was a private case, so we can't say who it was, but do you remember that, Ann? Yes. Yeah, that was pretty, was it the Ovilus or was that the PX, which is sort of the earliest generation That's of That's the one Ovilus. I have. Yeah, the, I think know, it was the Ovilus. The Ovilus, great. Yeah, the Ovilus one, or the first one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I have the Ovilus three, and now the there's an Ovilus four, and it has a touch screen. And I bought the Ovilus three, and then the touch screen came out like the next week later. Of course. And I was bummed. However, I must say this: one thing the Ovilus four doesn't have that the Ovilus three has is that thermal flashlight. Uh, it, it, yes. That actually makes your eyes the thermal imaging sort of camera. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was pretty happy then because I, I at least I have that, you know. I think I would rather have that than the touch screen. Yeah, I don't really need a touch screen. I'm not in it for a touch screen. I'm in it for evidence, yeah. you know. So, I, yeah, so I, well, I like the Ovilus as well. I do. I use it quite a bit. Um, you know, I just think that the best evidence, like we were talking before Ann came on, is, you know, audio, video, mm -hmm. yep. historical. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the three. Uh -huh. you know, as much as I love psychics and mediums, and, you know, Tony and I aren't mediums. We're extra larges. Okay? <laughs> but I'm bumps. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I like mediums. I use them all the time. They're fantastic for historical research, too. But, of course, skeptics are just going to be skeptics. You know, you're yeah. never going to convince them. It's like a religion almost. Mm -hmm. So, so the only thing that really can convince them are those three things. You know, so, it's so, true. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes. You know, but uh, anyway. So, yeah, I think the Ovilus is a good tool. It is. It definitely is it a is. good tool. It is an excellent tool, especially when it, uh, you know, utters a sound that you, you know, the, you don't expect. Um, for example, Sharon, Carl uh, Christopherson, I don't know whether uh, you all know or knew who Carl was. Oh, yeah, he I remember Carl. Yeah, yeah, we investigated the Mizpah with him. Yeah, Wally and I, we were in the Gofield Hotel, and I was using my Ovilus 1, 
Mm -hmm. And at the time, Carl was saying that there were a lot of break-ins in the Gofield Hotel lately, and uh, all of a sudden, there was a noise in the back of the hotel. We were standing in the lobby, mm -hmm. and the noise was like breaking glass, and Carl, being an ex-policeman, of course, he immediately uh, ran to investigate the noise, and as he was about to leave, we heard the sound of gunfire coming out of the ovulus. Really? Hmm. Yes. And um, you know, no sounds are programmed into the ovulus. Wow. That's and we even... also confirmed that with Bill Chapel. I had a, um, I had my camcorder rolling at the time, so I yeah. caught it. Wow. That was yeah, really that, amazing. Yeah, that is truly amazing. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people get confused with the ovulus because they... They often think, oh, you know, uh, maybe it's just randomly saying these words, mm -hmm. you know, or, uh, you know, maybe there's some sort of pattern to it. But it's actually reading the readings. You know, the readings are what associates the numbers which associate the words. You know, there, there well, is no algorithm. Yeah. There is no algorithm. Well, in it's supposed to read the the, or dictate the, you know, the changes in the energy level in the environment mm -hmm. yes. and that's what you know um and this, these changes are are kind of like uh manifest itself into a value into a word yeah you know and i know that bill chapel has programmed you know 500 into into the first ovulus and a lot more but it's amazing to find that the ovulus itself can kind of use word combinations, which he never did yeah. program mm -hmm. into it. I well, mean, that was amazing. And also, I, you know, I don't know whether you guys all have the iPhone, but there's also an iOculus phone app. A what? An oh, iOculus phone app. I'm oh, really? aware. Yeah, I'm aware of the phone app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. less money. You know, but... It is. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I actually have tried it before you know does it work it's pretty good it I, I mean i prefer i prefer the actual ovulus but you know. i do too but sometimes it's so convenient it's very mobile <laughs> i actually use the i ovulus uh, phone app when uh sharon and i we were doing a tmcc event where uh we were in a stagecoach station in nevada mm -hmm. and the I switched the Oculus on, and it kept saying fire, fire, child, child, on the second, when we were on the second floor, and it wasn't until later on, after the investigation, that we found out that, w that there was a real fire oh, up wow. there on the second wow. floor. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, you know, what's so really kind of amazing was last week, uh, I was at work and I was listening, you know, in a conference, I was in a conference call in my office and these conference calls can be really boring. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the call was about a syst uh, one of our systems upgrade in coming this October. So I was getting bored, so I switched on my iPhone and um, switched on my Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Well, you know, they were talking, the, um, the people were talking about technical, um, you know, enhancements to our uh, current system, et cetera. And all of a sudden, when I switched on the Oculus, it immediately said geek. Deek. Deek? Geek. Oh, geek. Geek. Oh, oh how geek. funny. That's that's funny. And it kept saying geek. That's, <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's funny. I mean, that was actually quite relevant. I mean, yeah. yes. <laughs> Okay. Always the commentary, the commentator, the ovulus. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean it's pretty amazing as a device, and uh, I'm and you probably remember the tombstone trip. Remember we took uh, there was that conference that we did there, and um, yeah. you know uh, I was lucky because I was on the team. Remember that got to use the actual first prototype of the ovulus. Yeah. yeah, it was like the size of one of those old uh, cell phones, you know, from like the 80s. That was mm. a huge brick. It was like a big brick, okay? And uh -huh. um, Was this one of Bill Chappell's? Yeah, it was Bill Chappell's original prototype? prototype of wow. the Ovilus, okay. okay? 
and uh, we were just luckily got on that team. Well, and, weren't you uh, with Debbie and Mark Constantino, right, in Tombstone? Debbie and Mark Constantino were in Tombstone at that conference. Yeah. They did they did a, a conference a speech. It was at a haunted hotel that had all these haunted rooms, and we went to the Birdcage Theater and all, oh, all that yeah. good stuff, you know. But one of the things I thought was pretty amazing is um, – we had a member, uh, Shauna. You know Shauna, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah. she uh-huh. she was she had the device in her hands, and we were uh, getting ready to do a walkthrough, and everybody was talking, and uh, Shauna was like, "Okay, everyone, we're gonna go ahead, and uh, we're we're gonna start this now." And then it, the Avila said, "Tour guide," and you know Shauna yes, was. I remember that. Yeah, and mm. and. Shauna was a tour guide, okay? So I think, you know, and in, in sometimes the Avalos just, like you're saying, and just reads the environment. And sometimes yes. it can, if, if your energy is in that environment, it'll just read it, you know? And even on my tour, the, you know, the Haunted Hate, www.hauntedhate.com. And, uh, <laughs> no, uh, to you, yeah, but, um, you know, even on the tour, Usually when I get, like, I'm the it thing for 13-year-old girl birthday parties, okay? I'm hotter than Justin Bieber, okay? Wow. Like lots of, I do lots of kids' parties. And those young kids always get stuff on those devices. Because, you know, kids are so much more open to the They're very normal. sensitive, yeah. yeah. And um, I remember one time, uh, you know, the kids would get his names and all of that stuff. And... Uh, I even remember one time when uh, Tony, when you and I were uh, doing some ghost hunting with uh, the coworker uh, Bevan. <laughs> the coworker well, sounds like a horror movie. She's an ex coworker now for me. But when we were, were when we were with Bevan, and then oh, it yeah. said his name, the guy who was killed there. That's right. And then it even said how he was killed. And it freaked them out. They were really freaked yeah. out by that. Then they got an EVP so, yeah. of a man screaming and screaming in the park, yeah. right by them. And they didn't. There was no man screaming until yeah. they played it back. Yeah, pretty That's pretty scary. amazing. And th- and that'll probably you know lead into your other you know ghost hunting tool, which is probably you know the digital recorder. Yep. You know. Uh, and can you hold on for the next break, or do you want to give us a call back in like fourteen minutes? Do you want to do that? Oh, in about 14 minutes? Yeah, do you want to hang on or do you want to call back? Oh, uh, well, you know what? What's I up? know that Sharon is listening on this. Okay. And you know where I'm living right now? There's mm-hmm. a lot of deer. <laughs> oh, are you deer watching too? <laughs> well, no, the deer are coming towards my car. And oh, help, help me, help me, the deer! <laughs> oh, 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 help me! <laughs> You're surrounded. Well, I have some questions for <laughs> you and Tommy, Tommy and so if you can call uh-huh. back, that would be perfect. Well, uh, uh, well, um, but it's up to you. Okay, no guarantee because there there are about seven of these deer looking at me. <laughs> the <It's a> gang, <laughs> <laughs> Bambi's on. And I know that that Sharon dun, dun. is probably waiting in the wings. Dun, dun, okay. Well, if we hear back, if we hear back from you, great. If not, we'll let uh, we'll give uh, Sharon a shot. Okay. All right. Go inside where okay. it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Stay away from those deer. This, is, those this is kind of weird. It is weird. Okay. But if things get rough, Bye, you can guys. always have some venison. All right. Thanks for calling in. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, man. Bye, bye. Good night. And that is our next caller, folks. Hello, are you there? Yes, hi. Hello, thanks for calling. Tony. Yep. Sharon yep. Leong. Hi, Vernon. The Linda, famous Sharon Leong. Hi, Judy Sharon. And Judy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the world-renowned professional ghost center, Sharon Leong. Oh no! No, no. yeah, no, I'm, just, uh, you are. I'm not. She's I mean, I'm just out yes, you are. I enjoy. You're a professional. Come on. You're a professional. You're very well known, and you're very respected in the paranormal field. Yes, you know you're it. The, Thank you you're, so you're much. You're the Christy as, as, Brinkley as you ghost hunter. She really Thank is. You. Thank awesome. you. Um, so we we are talking about equipment. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite? Wow. What's your f- absolute most favorite? piece of equipment to use on ghost hunting when you're ghost hunting 
outside the um, camcorder and audio recorder and uh, camera, I, li- I love the X-Cam SLS. Oh, the SLS. Can you give, for those that don't know, can you give us a quick little, like, what is it? What is it? What it does? Well, um, it was first discovered, actually, Microsoft made it for the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, when you do the um, the Wii, where you, they have videos, and you could play along, and there's a projection of yourself in front of the screen uh-huh. mm-hmm. that you're playing along with, and it reads your, um, your figure. It reads actually 20 points of human articulation. And I, what, how many years? About seven years ago, I think people who um, were playing games on their Xbox with the Kinect system, you know, which has, um, gosh, over 60 IR lights, because that's what they use to read the um, the articulation. They noticed that there are other figures in the room when, in fact, they're alone. It's as if there's a ghost, another something was showing up on the screen playing along with them oh and that was really weird and if you look on youtube you'll see a lot of examples of people who posted it saying something is weird with my xbox or there's a ghost in my house and so i think from there it was um a freeware where bill chapel decided for himself to experiment and he uh, created um, one of the early prototypes they used at the Stanley Hotel, and that was pretty amazing. Um, where uh, they caught the figure of a child sitting um, next to this woman wow. uh, mm-hmm. in a room, amazing. and um, the child would hold her hand, and it would do things on command, just like when you're re- recording EVPs and you get intelligent answers. Mm-hmm. Um, This is kind of like a visual version of that when you um, see, um, and and these figures look like stick figures. And if you see one, and to make sure it's not a false positive, you ask it to raise its hand or raise its feet, do something, and if it does it, um, chances are that it's just not um, random at all you know the, the I, biggest I'm, the biggest memory i have of using that device was on the hornet with with mm-hmm. bill chapel he was actually sitting at a table and me and jackie were sitting across from him at another table just doing mm-hmm. evp work with our recorders on the table mm-hmm. and he watched us very carefully the whole time and he was recording and he was watching with his this uh, sls camera mm-hmm. across from us when we got done with the session he goes you guys i have no idea you know what it was, but you had three, four of these stick figures all hovered around you the entire time you were there. As mm-hmm. soon as you got up and finished, they sort of moved away. Mm-hmm. He said, mm-hmm. I, you need to listen to your recorders because that was, I've never seen that much at once. That so. was just mm-hmm. like um, the experience I had at the palace um, in Sutter Creek, that when we were at the palace hotel across the street and we used that box. Yeah. And I had two stick figures dancing with me because I was dancing. <laughs> I heard about I that. that. And they were recording these two stick figures. Yep. <laughs> it's very, very cool. Only my sister would have two stick figures dancing with her. Of course, I like to dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Well, um, and so it's very, very exciting. Um, and it's relatively new. So I'm still experimenting with it. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that it records audio as well. Now, as what about the, the controversy? Visual. I heard that it. I know I was talking to Bill, and he's like, you know, this device is made, it isn't made to walk around with. He said it's, it's not supposed, made to walk around with. So you're really supposed to set it down mm-hmm. to get right, really right. accurate he, results. And I see all these gets, TV shows and everything, everybody's walking around with the around. thing. You're like, ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good idea because you are prone to get um, false positive readings when you walk around. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's a, a slight delay to how it reads the environment. Uh-huh. And so when you move the equipment, when you move the camera and walk with it, um, that could really, like, I don't know how to describe it. Because of the delay, you know, it, it will start reading something in front of you. And then if you were to move away from that, mm-hmm. then um, it, it would just um, confuse it. And, and you might get something that doesn't really 
you know, read correctly and, and it's not really there. Is it better if you something is it better if you like stop when you're on the camera with it and just sort of wait and take readings and not move a whole lot? Is that kinda how Right. It, I think just to stand just yeah. to stand there. And also uh, not to have it's better to do it in an open space than to have a lot of clutter in front of you mm -hmm. because uh, that could also give it false positives as well. Oh. And I um, and I tested, and you could read, actually the range is pretty good. It could be up to 20 feet away from you, you know, and so that's good. And um, like I say, with anything else, the best way um, to test whether you there is something intelligent mm -hmm. is to ask questions once you pick something up and see if it responds to your questions or not. I noticed some of the most um, effective kind is the physical, like, I'm going to raise my right arm, can you raise your right arm, that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I you know, have yet to get any EVPs out of this, though, I, would, I keep trying yeah, to yeah. see if it could communicate um, all, you know, via the audio pickup on it as well. And it also reads temperature and light frequencies and it has a, a whole range of uh, environmental readings that Bill had built into the X um, cam. Nice. So it's pretty neat in that respect. So what about and the... And also... Oh, yep. hmm? I was just going to say, what about the FLIR? Because I know you guys have a FLIR camera as well. Yeah, I got one for the iPhone. I have um, like this large, heavy, bulky one that I don't really take out. Mm -hmm. But I prefer the one that they've made for the iPhone uh, 5 and 6. And um, it's, I think that um, I've yet to really pick up anything that I would consider paranormal on that. Right. But again, it's, it's like, you know, it takes time to... to um, to, to see if there's a pattern uh, in using that or not. Mainly, I like it for um, being out in the dark, in the woods, or oh, you know, yeah. just for one's own safety. See all those to animals? Have that, to see if there's anyone hiding behind a bush or, or around the or bend foxes, of a car. Foxes and rabbits and <laughs> raccoons. Oh, lots of, oh, yeah, lots of... Speaking of which... Um, I think people forget that sometime uh, when I watch these shows on television or or um, hear things um, like inside an environment. Mm -hmm. There's um, especially in the early days at Preston Castle, there were a lot of um, small critters running around inside there. Also, I have the owls and and um, some of the birds. There were foxes, and um, you know people could. Uh, uh, misinterpret some of the sounds. Yep, that, even they, Ghost Hunters did that on their episode with the owls. They're like, oh, that's a woman screaming. You're like, no, no that was an owl. <laughs> they screamed yeah, yeah, they, really loud. They thought, yeah, absolutely. So, um, just to be um, cautious, especially in um, even in urban environments, mm -hmm. things could be disturbed by um, critters and rodents and a lot of these old places do have um they harbor a lot of critters even alcatraz tony yep. i've seen i've seen I've, rats out there the, <laughs> i've seen in the operating room i've seen it oh yeah i'm sure well, they're Tommy, out there you were there too i think during that time when yeah. we filmed that um the devil's island oh episode. yeah yeah that episode yeah that's right yeah I, I, <laughs> there were some things running around there yep. and, absolutely um i've seen him in live and, and in uh, person <laughs> But um, going back to the equipment, yep. you don't have to really spend a lot of money on this kind of stuff. Like one of my good friends, Gary Gaka, he's the uh, inventor of the mail meter and oh. lots of us, and the mm -hmm. um, SB7 a spirit box. He said, oh, yeah, that's what we have, right? That's what we have in here the in box. the studio. Like, you know, those uh, Wooly Willy, the Wooly Willy. Yeah, um, I remember Wooly Willy. Willy. You know, with the metal shavings and yeah. the minute and use uh, the magnet and put the mustache and make oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah oh he even well, invented sometimes that sometimes I bring a woolly willy along you know we're going to spend a long time at a haunted locale oh that's a great just idea just to see if um, you know they can manipulate um, the me metal shavings on woolly willy oh that's interesting oh that's 
Yeah, how do they yeah, do and that? That's, and that's just like you can buy one at Daiso for about fifty. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Daiso so, has them. Absolutely. <laughs> they have Willy Willies. Yes, they do. And yeah, I don't think also, they call them Wooly um, Willies though. I think they call, but they, but I remember that was the original, the Wooly Willies. I had one when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah I had, I had. My dad used to get them for me. Right, and also um, the environment itself, you could control leaves within a smaller space. Mm-hmm. We've always um, during the winter, like from November through March, when the air is a lot drier one tends to experience more paranormal activity because there's Mm -hmm. a lot of static electricity in the air. Well, I think you can manipulate Mm -hmm. that by getting a dehumidifier, you know, and and plugging it in to a room and um, see if you can't uh, uh, make the air drier, the atmosphere, to cause more uh, static. And um, that might charge up some of the energy. Yeah, and that, then you um, rub people. on the rug and put your <laughs> finger behind someone's ear. <laughs> <in. laughs> Take the yeah, balloon and out. And <laughs> the, um, I saw on, um, it's not Daiso, but this Japanese um, device that if you're prone um, to get static charges, like if you were to touch, you know, your car handle and, and um, prior to that you were rubbing against something woolen or anything that would charge up the static in your body they you could use this device which is like under five bucks and um i i think that you if you were to touch it mm-hmm. against something metal it could um help de mag de electrify you or, oh. so you wouldn't get shocked Right. And I'm thinking that people who are experiencing negative energies, maybe they could just experiment with this device. Interesting. And, and see if, it, you know, we could um, somehow de-electrify um, them mm-hmm. or take get the static out of uh, their, their um, body right. somehow. I remember frying a, a frying a fax machine once with the static electricity. <laughs> Literally, uh, I touched it; it zapped from me, and the machine uh-huh, went uh-huh. poof, and smoke <laughs> came out of it. Oh my oh, god! Man. Oh no! It was dead. It was eight hundred bucks. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, you probably looked down. You know, with the early Frankenstein <laughs> with a hairdo. I Maybe that gave me a few a, extra you know, years. Berna would know. You know, there was this turn-of-the-century book yeah, on really. Frankenstein, Verna, uh-huh. and this is when I was doing a lot of antiquarian books. I, it's beautiful. It was one of the original drawings of Frankenstein, nice. and his hair was all punked out, all rainbow <laughs> colors, and it was, like, standing on this end, like like the electric <laughs> shock going through his system. It's great. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um... But Trumpenstein. that's something that, that we can all do. Just look around what you have in your house and, and just, like Gary said, think outside the box. Uh-huh. And um, there are things that you can use that may not have been um, purposely invented to hunt ghosts with. But, uh, you know, everything is energy and matter. So. Well, I mean, even uh, a regular uh, magnetic audio re- cassette recorder is, a, is mm-hmm. a good tool. wasn't made for ghost hunting. And that f- right. for that matter, really, voice recorders were not made for ghost hunting either. I know Jackie wants me to give a shout out to the Olympus 4100 PC, which mm-hmm. I agree. I've had several I've of those. That's my mm-hmm. favorite one of all of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think Anne uses that one, too. I'm not sure. Um, the really small, Olympus, the small the super model, one? I have your that. Your model is the 4100. That's uh, your Jackie favorite? just recommended that yeah, one. It's, it's yeah, it's a silver one. It's Olympus. It's silver mm-hmm. in color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if they stopped making them, but mm-hmm. she stockpiled. Money, I stockpiled because I had the best results with it, and I always have. Mm-hmm. So that's uh-huh. just the Olympus is great. But again, those weren't made for ghost hunting. They, they accidentally, I mean, I remember the Sony model. I think you have it as well, Sharon, right? The, uh, the Panasonic. The Panasonic, Panasonic model. That that's early mm-hmm. VR, um, 60. Right, and that's where... It's really, really noisy, but um, you always get something with that. You think Panasonic went, hey, we did. have something here, man. We should manufacture these for the ghost hunters. No, they didn't do what? that. You think Panasonic would have manufactured them for the ghost hunters, but mm-hmm. no, they just put it, you know, I'll stop making that model. <laughs> right. They, um, well, that wasn't the purpose. 
they wanted to sell their audio recorders to <laughs> people going to conferences and what have you, and and it just wasn't working. They got so many um, sent back to the factory saying something's wrong with this. I, you know, we're, I'm getting voices that shouldn't be on there. <laughs> Imagine the dictation That's nightmares that caused. <laughs> and how many of those recorders were sent back? They probably just destroyed. That would be a lot of ghost hunters would be after those. You know, another thing, uh, equipment, well, actually, Bill Chapa, what he made that I'd like to experiment with more is um, he has a device, it's the ES device. I think I used it when we were um, at the, uh, well, at that institute. I'm not yeah, I have one of those too, Sharon. Yeah, I think that is fabulous. It, it translates audio, sound, speech, music, whatever, into pure EMS. And um, in the, um, and that's just experimentation, you know, on the um, basis that perhaps spirits can manipulate EMF better, or right. maybe they need, need it in order to to affect something in in our in our dimension or whatever. And Tommy, he also has made the uh, opposite. In other words, the inductor where if you were to plug it into a speaker or into a recorder, it, you can hear the EMF. It translates EMF back into audio. Mm-hmm. And so that's yeah. pretty amazing. Like if, um, so far, I, I just hear a lot of buzzing and stuff, but who knows? Now, when, if that's where the voices are coming from, mm-hmm. you might be able to hear a conversation. I don't know. Yeah. I think that, that, you know, one has to, I, I need to experiment with that more, actually, so. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the simplest tools you could get, too, is talking about EMFs, is a compass. Mm-hmm. A compass mm-hmm. is a great mm-hmm. tool. People don't really think of it mm-hmm. as a ghost hunting tool, but, you know, because it is working on the electromagnetic fields, you know, then the spirit or the ghost can possibly manipulate it. Yep. And, um, mm-hmm. Or those rods, too. Uh, the uh, dowsing rods. Dowsing rods. rods. Yeah, dowsing people rods, like dowsing or, rods. Or even, like, um, or, or even um, the stones, the mood rings, that, those chemicals that um, inside mood ring, mm-hmm. where yeah, it reacts color. to the heat. Mm. And if, the, um, if there are cold spots or heat it, uh, spots, then it would change color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you can, um, through there are some online catalogs where you can just buy the stuff that they make the, the mood rings out of. Hmm. I wonder if you could buy that in like a, a bigger piece so you can make a device that's strictly for that. You probably could. That'd you just have to find so out where they cool. make them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might just, be nice to just, like, turn um, it into like cut a out mat. a life size figure. Like I think it. they come in sheets actually. Oh, and, sheets. Uh, Perfect. You know, the Ghost mind like wheels sheets. now. You can really put your mind into <laughs> thinking of a lot of stuff you can use that for. Tommy just said, ghost, or, ghost you know like what? sheets. <laughs> Speaking of right. ghosts or, during or the things break. That, that I can't stand, like, you know, when you buy something ship, and have it shipped to you and it's fragile and they have all this popcorn, oh, yeah, the yeah. styrofoam popcorn, mm-hmm. yeah. how it gets stuck on you because of the static. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm sure as far as um, having... Uh, spirit activity if you could block off a room or a corridor with no air currents or anything and have all those um, star from popcorn you know piled up in there mm-hmm. I, I'm sure with some of them you could see some action if there's any uh, electric energy at all passing through uh, speaking of ghosts don't mean to interrupt your your conversation Sharon but during the break um, T- Tommy uh, sister is here and she reported hearing some knocking on the walls of the studio and then while we were on the air while you were talking uh, Mm -hmm. Linda and I suddenly turned around and Linda um, actually brought it to my attention that um, there was knocking on the other side of the wall where we were and um, of course there's nobody else in in the studio but us nobody's really against the wall so we all heard it and uh, so for some reason we're having activity here in the studio while we're talking all about mm-hmm. this. Well, it's almost as know, if they're the saying, come on, haunted. test me. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I think that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, well, well I do too. Sh- Sharon, you know as well as I do about the Odd Fellows building. We, we <laughs> did that investigation. It's a very haunted building we're in. Yeah, you know, you guys really should just do a whole show on that sometime. We, we did. Really sh- uh, yeah, well, we did yeah. a seance. Well, no, we did a seance, but we really do sh- should do a show on just the whole building. Just maybe on people's experiences. There's quite a few. Oh, know. yeah. You mm-hmm. know, Sharon, oh, be, yeah. be nice to have her on again. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that conference that we did here at the um, at the at the building was wonderful. Yeah. We, we, we got a we had a lot of um, documented a lot of evidence in that conference. Yep, there it would be great if we could do something like that again uh, next year, perhaps. Oh, that would be wonderful. I have actually I'd some really that. good ideas, for Sharon, and we'll talk about them at the next Odd Fellows meeting. I'm going to talk to you about that, okay? Next meeting's tomorrow. Okay. That's, That's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. I, yeah. I also have a birthday present for you. Oops. Oh. 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 <laughs> well, Man. I think um, happy birthday. Likewise Let's all sing happy you. birthday to Sharon. Happy birthday to Tommy. Happy birthday, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Hi, you, Happy everyone. Birthday. Um, and uh, Verna, isn't yours coming up at the end yes, of the month? Yes, the end of the month. Uh-huh. Yes, Verna's. Oh, wow. Verna's yeah. month. Yeah. Um, we got our Justin Bieber shirt. Yes. Gee, just what I always <laughs> wanted. Gosh, Tony, you know me so well. I know. And some cha-cha heels. <laughs> oh, cha-cha yeah, heels. You guys just... God. She's a Bieber. She they that. know me so uh, well. Uh, these people, believer, I can't but, hide anything uh, from them. Yeah, I can't remember what is a I believer in the Bieber. A, a Bieber Lieber or a believer. 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 <laughs> oh, good lord! Well, you better adjust in your Bieber. Uh, That's right. You know what I really uh, want most of all: ghost hunting equipment. And I don't. It looks like it works, but I don't know. But I don't want to spend seventeen hundred dollars. Is a Huff Wonder Box. Uh-huh. Steve, Huff, what? Steve Huff makes these wonder boxes. Oh, I have one. I mean, um, of course. he himself <laughs> gave the diagram to his, they call called Geo Boxes. Yeah, or Geo Box, boxes. Wonder Box. He has yeah, a and, name and for I've all of them. I've seen them on, on Nick's um, new show. Yeah. Um, what was the name of that show? Paranormal Lockdown. Yeah, Paranormal Lockdown. Paranormal Lockdown, Lockdown yeah. yeah. That's his show, and I was pretty impressed. And you could actually get those for about three hundred dollars. Oh, they're and down you know in what price. they are. Of course, you well, know what they are. What? I think Frank Sumption actually was one of the forerunners of the uh, voice boxes, and you know he's passed away and mm-hmm. every, but he's left quite a legacy. What he did, some of his later machines, he uh, connected echo chambers to them, oh. and that's the basis of what a geo box or a huff box or wonder box that's what it is essentially it's a sb7 it's like um a spirit box with an echo chamber connected with a reverb device like they use for guitar pedals Mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. a musical reverb device connected to it and also um a noise squelcher connected to it that 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 cuts down the noise that that barely makes any um that any readings on a on a scale so you have a noise squelch and a reverb connected to a spirit box that's what the wonder box is and i wouldn't pay 1700 yeah. you can even make one yourself or just you know 300 200 dollars some websites will sell them for yeah i'll have hmm. to look into that we're actually out of time now oh. yeah it's been oh, fun, fun. Okay. yeah i hope we're- you we should do another well, one. Yeah, absolutely. Really There's should. so many more There's tools. There's so much more to talk yep. about. Right. So, well, thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for coming. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon. And we'll really see great. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, guys. Okay. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thanks to Sharon for calling in tonight on our ghost hunting equipment show. And She's folks, full of information. Yeah, she really is. We are She's a very knowledgeable of, lady. And we will be back next week for more Ecto Portal. And I'll see you guys in the end of the month. That's right. Bye. 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 Sleep soundly. Royalty-free, copyright-free music by Kevin McLeod and Ross Bugden.